Here's an example of uh, building a simple hair dryer uh, using a combination of uh, solid body imported from a CAD system and a, uh, that would be this top section here, and a handle design done in Adobe Illustrator. Could be done in something else as well, but in this case I did it in Adobe Illustrator and imported it in. I've got some guide curves and some dimension lines and things like that that are going to help me keep my size straight, but this is where we'd start. The next thing we do is we inflate the handle to a certain size. So we'll use the inflate command. Come up and select this curve. Grab it with the hand and inflate. Uh, we look at that uh, curve from the front using the deform tool and we would adjust its proportions. Say set it on proportional adjustment. Come up, grab it, tuck it in, do different changes to the size depending on how we want it to be affected. Apply that. remove the plane, don't have to see it anymore, and uh, increase the resolution of the actual piece just so it's a bit smoother. And I'm going to turn it up to two millimeters in size, evaluate it, and I'll actually go down to one millimeter in size. Each step, each progressive step, instead of going all the way right down to one on the first thing to go down progressively in steps, actually helps smooth the model out. It does a progressive refinement of the surface and creates a smoother clay model. So we can go down in steps like that and be able to refine the model, create a more and more smoother surface. Some of the next things I'll be doing is just adding some simple wire cuts to add some form to the handle. Uh, I did a wire cut add here to be able to add clay in the back. So I just created a plane, projected clay down there, and uh, blended it in with that part of the surface. Uh, another thing I'd like to do is to be able to uh, cut in areas on the clay uh, to be able to add some just forms to the handle grips. And in this case, I took the model and I offset this piece here and created a thinner piece by approximately one millimeter. And you can see that here, uh, the inside piece is just slightly thinner. And what I'm going to do is just cut away that outside using a wire cut to remove to reveal the inside. So I'll have a slight little bevel in here. I'll say let's wire cut this, cut away the material, and once removed I'll have a nice little step in on the front and the back. And then I'll just merge those two pieces together. Again merge the outside with the inside, do a combine. So you can see those are two separate pieces. Then I did several smooths. I don't want this to be a hard edge handle. So I want to be able to have it kind of nice, uh, soft and organic. So I just used the smooth command, or the area smooth command, and I selected the entire thing and smoothed it. And I smoothed it quite a bit actually. Um, I rounded it off so I didn't have any hard edges. I actually smoothed it a little bit more. So again, I've got it so that it's a nice kind of soft organic handle with uh, kind of a hint of the actual uh, cutaways in it. Just makes it a little bit more uh, uh, detailed. Also in those areas that are kind of like the slight insets, there's going to be a gripped handle. Now you notice I'm working on this without having it connected to the actual body yet. Um, when I do the uh, body connection, uh, I'll explain it when I actually get there, but I want to make sure that I don't do anything that changes uh, the form as it goes from clay to this uh, solid. I need that to be an accurate register all, or I will get a discontinuity there. In this next step I've just completed a voxelized region. I just did, uh, I created a curve on a plane and I used voxelized with profile, gave it a certain thickness and converted the area where that profile intersected that solid and it created a voxelized region or an area converted to clay. And you can see my handle intersects that part and that's where I'm going to be joining the two together uh, to build a blended handle form. And here I've uh, used the area smooth command just by saying you know painting an area between these uh, where the two parts were joined together using the combine tool and I just did an area smooth on that area uh, and blended the two together to create that uh, connection between the two. I um, I want this transition to be as smooth as possible. Uh, I could have used the shape tool for example to do a number of different things uh, but I wanted it a pretty simple where it joined between the two and again being able to use voxels and clay you can just kind of jam it together, blend it, and round it, smooth it, whatever you want. Now to just step back a minute to show you how I did that blend um, 
what I want to be able to do is do as smooth a blend between the two as possible. I want to be able to do lots of smoothing and changes on this piece while not changing the piece where uh, the two geometries meet, the sheet body and the clay area that was uh, converted from it. Uh, so you can see in this example I've actually got two pieces. I had gr selected an area from this piece and I had grabbed it and copied it so that I had a chunk of material up here that I could work with. And in this way I had a piece that I could smooth, blend, do all kinds of changes to without affecting where the two other geometries met. And you'll see what I do is I now go and combine this piece where you know I've been able to do the blend and the smoothing and everything like that too. I can combine those two pieces together and get a much smoother piece. So I'll do combine into handle one and been able to arrive at this really nice transition from this piece here into my piece that I don't want any changes on at all. Again, I don't want to have anything happen where this piece contacts my sheet body. Those pieces must stay in as exact a register as possible to prevent gaps and discontinuities when I go and create uh, patches that reverse engineer from this edge onto the clay. Now, again, pay, atten pay no attention to this clay up here. This clay is just from the overbuild. When this area is voxelized, it builds out a certain number of millimeters to specify. And that clay there won't affect uh, the work that I do later because it's outside of the edge that I'm going to copy from, and the edge being this edge here. So it's not going to affect where I work from. Uh, you can see it's clearly on the other side of it, but just to point it out. 